I think a lot of us are angry and frustrated at how easy the media manipulates and controls the majority of the population. It's sad how people blindly believe what they hear in the news, what they're watching on TV. Those same people have no objective thinking whatsoever. On top of all of this fake news, you have painfully obvious agendas being pushed forward. Just over the past few days, dozens of articles about shutting down meat processing plants has blitzed the media. Hundreds of U.S. meat workers have now tested positive. Impact on the Texas meat industry. Hundreds of meat workers have now tested positive. In Nebraska, meat plant workers are afraid to go to work, but can't afford to stay home. Meat plant temporarily closes near PA County with one of state's highest concentrations. Colorado meat packing plant with thousands of employees closed after outbreak. Poultry workers' death highlights spread in meat plants. Meat plants are shutting down as workers get sick. Tonight, workers in some meat plants are raising the alarm. Civil rights group Lulick says these stunning images of workers crowded together were taken inside the JBS pork plant in Marshalltown, Iowa, late last month, two weeks after the Trump administration announced social distancing guidelines. These are ticking time bomb workplaces. At the JBS beef processing plant in Grand Island, Nebraska, at least 28 confirmed cases of Eddie Diaz just got his results today. He's positive. I'm concerned about my health, about my family. He says cleaning crews are doing a good job, but do you believe that people are following social distancing guidelines? I don't think some people are taking this seriously. Tonight in a statement, the company tells NBC News it's adopted enhanced safety measures like staggering shifts and increased sanitation. Edgar Fields represents union employees working for a variety of companies. How many workers at those plants have been reaching out to you with concerns? Every facility. They're fearful of taking this home to their family. You know, this all seems a bit fishy. We've talked about how the food supply is compromised due to natural solar cycles affecting the temperature, therefore affecting the crop harvest, therefore negatively affecting how much food we can grow, resulting in us not having anything to eat. My leading theory has been that all of this Toyota Corolla nonsense is a cover up for future food shortages. Would the shelves have gone empty if this outbreak never happened? Is the panic buying an excuse for them to run out of food? Why is it that over a month after the panic buying, we still see shelves sold out of pasta, basic goods? I went to Whole Foods earlier and like half of the things were still out of stock. The shelves were almost still empty. If you do any looking around, you'll see many articles about crop losses over the past year, canned food shortages. Just one bad growing season has turned our lives upside down. Or so it seems. Have the powers at B intentionally done this? Are they causing food shortages by doing things like this? As many as 50 people at a JBS SAB facility in Colorado's Weld County tested positive, adding to more than 160 cases at a Cargill Incorporated meat packaging plant in Pennsylvania, union officials said on Friday. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem on Friday reported 190 cases at a Smithfield Foods Incorporated pork facility, the Associated Press said. The Cargill and Smithfield plants are being shuttered, while JBS said it will continue operations. You know what I have to say? Good. Fuck Cargill. Fuck JBS. Fuck Tyson. Fuck Smithfield. These cucks can take a hike with their estrogenic feedlot poison meat. I got a big ass smile on my face knowing these pricks are suffering just as much as the people they're shoving this shit down their throats. This is a great opportunity to get people supporting anyone besides these guys. If you can buy meat from somewhere, the only requirement that's good enough for me is that it's not from Cargill, it's not from JBS, it's not from Tyson, it's not from Smithfield. Some of those workers at this Tyson plant in Camilla, Georgia, where four employees have died from some employees described to NBC News having to work shoulder to shoulder on the line. Tonight, Tyson says it's heartbroken over the deaths and will close the plant for deep cleaning. We've relaxed our attendance policies to ensure that team members feel encouraged to stay home if they're not feeling well. The company sent us these pictures inside showing new partitions between some workers. Now, some companies have put measures in place. Are those measures enough? 
I don't think they are. If we can protect workers from when they walk in the door and when they walk out, that company has done what they need to do. Hey, these motherfuckers in the news can take a fucking hike. Workers are starting to die. No, no. This pandemic is going to be exposed as the biggest fraud in history. Most deaths are occurring in hospitals. Oh, yeah, no shit, because people are dying as they normally would, but you happen to be in a hospital and will slap a Toyota Corolla tag on you to collect that sweet federal money. I mean, did you know that New York was getting 12000 per patient? Some states getting crazy amounts of money, 300000 per patient in Montana, Minnesota, and Nebraska, and up to 470000 per patient in West Virginia. We know these hospitals are criminals that will beg you up for a quick paycheck. But if the evil that goes on in these places was actually understood by the public, we would be throwing these big pharma minions in ditches and hanging them by the thousands. If you think people that work in hospitals don't know about this, <laughs> if no one is dying outside of closed hospital doors, people need to wake the fuck up. The other aspect to this is that the plants might not have enough work. I don't know if they're trying to cover up the lack of demand for meat in restaurants. It makes sense as the majority of steaks sold, as well as certain parts of the animal, go to these steakhouses, barbecue spots, and restaurants in general. We've essentially had to mold our entire business model that's worked for 10 years. We changed in about a week, said Ulayers, who's also added he doesn't believe there is any shortage of meat currently. There's no supply issue. We have the animals. We were ready for South by Southwest. We were ready for a very busy spring. It's just we lost all of our customers, said Ulayers. We have plenty of beef, we just have to get it into the hands of the consumers. The United States has a large enough meat inventory to prevent shortages for consumers, explained Christine McCracken, senior analyst of animal protein from Rabobank. Processors that were previously servicing restaurants or cafes have started to sell to retailers, and some restaurants are selling groceries, including meat, directly to customers. Retail is full, said McCracken. I don't anticipate any real shortages for the consumer. The closures mark a very small fraction of the overall slaughter. In the United States, she added. At this point, there's no real reason to think that there'd be any major disruptions. With Frankie's Free Range Meat, I've seen this happening over the past few weeks. You know, a lot of these farmers and suppliers that were more restaurant focused are suffering and having a very difficult time breaking into the retail market. And even though there is still a bunch of panic buying going on, you know, I anticipate two, three, four months from now, the demand for meat is going to plummet and you know a lot of these businesses are going to be not businesses anymore. Uh, with people staying at home, eating mostly non-perishable goods, junk foods, generally less animal-based stuff, you know, a lot of grains, it's easy to see why these meat plants wouldn't be needed temporarily. If you analyze the average standard American diet, of course it is heavily grain-based and the only time people tend to eat more animal products is when they go out. We can't discount that people are lazier, don't have home-cooked meals as often, and the foods that are easier to prep that you just throw in the microwave or oven are basically not meat. Pizza, pasta, frozen dog crap, whatever you have it. We know people aren't at home searing a steak or broiling some chicken every night like our parents and grandparents used to do. Of course, there's a couple of other things to think about. You know, is this going to be a reason to say, oh, the meat is bad, it carries the Toyota Corolla, it's gonna get us sick, you can't eat meat anymore. Okay, so why aren't they, you know, posting any bad stories about vegetable processing or fruit processing facilities having these issues or just food distribution centers where just as many people are working with just as much food. It, I, none of this adds up in, in any way whatsoever. You know, these news media people that write this stuff, the journalists, are catering to the sheeple. You know, not like me or you that see through this bullshit from 10 miles away. And for those of you thinking, Frank, why would Cargill, JBS, Smithfield, Tyson want people to not eat meat? Why would they do this? Well, these companies are heavily invested in plant-based proteins, uh, so there's definitely a possibility of uh, us going down the vegan route. Uh, and then again, guys, this is just more nonsense on top of nonsense that you know we're currently being uh, spoon-fed by any mainstream news. So you know, hopefully you guys can spread the word and 
uh, get people to do their own objective research. I mean, it's, it's really crazy to me that you could just put something on TV and people believe it without seeing it. But uh, what are you going to do? So thank you guys for joining me today. Of course, guys, please, you know, like the video. And if you can, leave a comment below for the algorithm. Uh, if you guys do want to support me further, there's a bunch of stuff you can check out down in the description below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Boop, boop.